All right, so this section I titled, I titled Ant Problems, and I don't know that's the best name, but I didn't know what else to call it. Um, and to be in this section, a problem is going to involve multiple probabilities. Uh, essentially, it's going to be, a, every problem is going to have multiple experiments, and we're going to have to compute the probability separately for each experiment. And so, as, as I kind of read through my um, write-up here, so an AND problem, the problems in this section, will involve repeating an experiment twice or doing consecutive different experiments. And then, you know, again, experiments can be, it's a very loosely defined term. I mean, picking a shirt from five shirts can be an experiment or, or uh, rolling a dice one time and recording the number that comes up, up face up is an experiment. So we use the ex term experiment really kind of loosely. But nevertheless, in this section, every problem is going to have multiple experiments. Whereas in the last section on OR problems, we only did one quote unquote experiment. We rolled a dice one time, we spun a spinner one time, in this, or we picked one card. In this section, it's going to be multiple experiments. If it's a card problem, instead of picking one card, it's going to be picking multiple cards. And we'll just kind of dig into it. So the formula for this section is really easy. The probability of two experiments, experiment A followed by experiment B, for both of the experiments to happen successfully, the probability of A happening and probably and then B happening is equal to the probability of A happening times the probability of B happening. It's kind of an easy formula, and the problems in this section won't be probably ridiculously hard. So here's an example of a, a, a classic quote-unquote and problem. You'll notice that I immediately kick up the number from one to two. So two cards are selected with replacement from a standard deck of cards. So this means, this means I'm gonna take one card out look at it, note what it is, put it back in the deck, and then pull another card out. So I'm pulling two cards out as opposed to one card like we've been doing in most of the problems so far. So what is the probability that two queens will be selected? So I didn't even have the word and in the problem yet, but I'm gonna consider this an and problem because we need to get a queen on the first selection and on the second selection. So the formula, or the problem could be worded like this, probability of getting a queen first and a queen second. So that's kind of my A and B for this. And the formula says that if I'm doing two experiments and I want both of the experiments to, if I need both the experiments to be successfully completed, then I'll have to compute the probabilities of each experiment separately and multiply the individual probabilities to get the probabilities of both of them happening. So the probability of getting a queen first and a queen second is going to equal the probability of getting a queen first, I'll make it a Q for queen, and first times the probability of getting a queen second. So that's how I would apply this formula to that problem, the probability of A and B, in this case the probability of getting a queen first and a queen second equals the probability of getting a queen first times the probability of getting a queen second. So now I need to do the probabilities. Well how do I do probabilities with cards? Well I need to I need to know how many cards have that look. And in this particular problem, a deck of cards has four queens. So for the first probability, the probability of getting a queen first is gonna be four and 52 because a deck of cards has four queens out of the 52 cards. For the next probability, it's gonna matter whether I'm putting that card back or not. And in this problem, I'm putting the card back so for the second card, there's still 52 cards in the deck that I can choose from, and there's still four queens. So it's going to be another four and 52. And then look at this. I wrote an answer as a percent. Now that's unusual for me. Generally, we've been writing the answers as reduced fractions. So let me 
give the reduced fraction answer. I'm going to break out my calculator to do this. So I'm going to go 4 and 52 times 4 and 52 on my calculator. And I'm going to put them in parentheses just to be safe. I don't know for a fact whether I need the parentheses or not. But if I do 4 and 52 and then times 4 and 52, putting them both in a parentheses, and hit enter, and then math, enter, enter, I get 1 and 169. Notice this was 0 0.0059, and to make that into a percent, I moved the decimal over twice and got 0.59%. Um, I'm going to, well, because I gave it, I guess it's okay, but if I look at my answers, my answers are all reduced fractions, so I'm going to keep my answers in reduced fractions here. And so that's probably not the answer we'd want, even though it's, it's not wrong. It's not just consistent with what we've been doing. So if I took this same queen problem and changed the word with replacement to without replacement, so I'm selecting two cards from a, a deck of cards, and what, without replacement, meaning I take one card out, put it away, and then take another card out, and don't put the first card back, what's the probability of getting two queens? That's still the same sort of question symbolically, but the probabilities are different. So it's the probability of getting a queen first, and a queen second, And that's still going to equal the probability of getting a queen first times the probability of getting a queen second. So it's the same generic setup because it's the same, same criteria. I'm pulling two cards. I need them both to be queens. So this part's not going to look different. But the without replacement part is going to make the second probability change. So for the first probability, a deck of cards has four queens out of the 52 cards. So the first probability, the probability of getting a queen for my first is still 4 and 52. But for the second probability, I have to assume the first probability was successful. That means I got a queen on the first one. And I didn't put that card back. So for my second denominator, I no longer have 52 cards in the deck because the one card I removed is gone. So I only have 51 cards left. And I'm assuming that the first card was a queen, so now I no longer have four queens left in my deck of cards, I only have three queens left. So the second probability reflects that I pulled a queen from the first card, on the first card, so there's only 51 left, and of the 51, of the four queens, one of them's gone, so there's only three queens left. So now I'm going to figure out what this is, I'm going to do my calculator again. So I'm going to go parentheses, 4 divided by 52. Probably don't need a times if I just put another parentheses next to each other with the 3 divided by 51. And then math, enter, enter. And 1 in 221 is the chance. And then I did it as a percent. And again, I'm not sure why I did it as a percent. Because we always have been doing problems as uh, probabilities as reduced fractions. So we'll leave those as reduced fractions. I didn't bring my card templates this time, and I might have to um, get my card templates to do some of the problems. I'll, I'll kind of wing it right now and see if I need it. So um, there's another term on, on this page. It's not a terribly important term because it won't impact our ability to do the homework, but it's something that fits in this section. Uh, I'll mention it, and if, you just, if it just goes out of your mind, it's fine. If it, if it sticks with you, it's fine too. So two events are called independent if one occurring doesn't affect the probability of the other. So in our queen problem, in the first queen problem, the events were independent because the probability of getting a queen on the second one was the same as the probability of getting a queen on the first one. It didn't change. So these two events are considered independent events because the probability of getting a queen on the second wasn't impacted by the probability of getting a queen on the first. However, in the second scenario, the same problem with a different uh, experiment, these two events are no longer considered independent because the probability of getting a queen on the second is not the same as getting a probability of a queen on the first. In fact, the probability went down. And so in these cases, drawing a queen, drawing a queen on the, the queens were their dependent events. 
and in the the first problem they're independent events because the the fact that a queen happened on the first doesn't change the probability of a queen happening on the second when you put the card back but when you don't put the card back then the probability of getting a queen on the second one is greatly impacted by getting the probability of a queen on the first one the probabilities aren't the same so two events are called independent if their their probabilities are essentially the same as opposed to different when you do the events in succession. And here I said rolling a dice and tossing a, a coin are an example of independent events because if I wanted to roll a dice and record the number that sh shows up on it and I toss a coin and say whether it's heads or tail, the number that comes up on the dice isn't going to influence whether or not the coin comes up head or tail. So those are independent events. So then, then here's our, my talk up. For our queen scenario, the first one is an independent event because the probability of getting a queen stayed consistent. But the second one was not independent because the probability of getting a queen went down when I didn't put the card back. And if, there, if events aren't independent, then they're dependent. Absolutely not important in terms of getting our um, homework done properly. So about ready to do um, the, first ten prob the first 10 problems, which means we need to know a deck of cards pretty well. I don't have a deck of cards with me. I'm gonna take the two minutes to, to go to my office to get my card little templates, just so I can show you the cards that I'm counting when I'm doing my probabilities. You might not need that by now. problems when we're picking two cards as opposed to one card it's a big deal whether it's with or without replacement and in these 10 problems it's without replacement meaning I'm gonna pull a card out and not put it back so for my problem two I'm trying to find the pro I'm pulling two cards so I'm trying to find the probability that the first card is black and the second card is black. And the formula in this section tells me that if I just compute each individual probability and multiply them together, that I'll get that prob the problem solved properly. So the probability when I draw two cards without replacement of getting a black first and a black second is equal to the probability of getting a black first times the probability of getting a black second. The first probability, since I haven't pulled any cards out yet, is going to have a denominator of 52. And the numerator is going to be the number of black cards. And in my deck of cards, these are the black cards. Oh, sorry about the horribleness of this. But anyways, those are the black cards in my deck of cards. And the clubs and the spades are black. If I count these, I'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So the first probability is going to be 26 and 52 because there's 26 black car cards of the 52 cards in the deck. I can't tell you for certain which black card's going to be pulled, but it in some sense doesn't matter. Whichever one is pulled, it's not going to be allowed to be selected again. So when I pick my second card, the denominator is going to be 51. And I'll just pretend like the six of clubs was the card that was pulled. So from my deck of cards now, I have to pick a card and it needs to be a black card. Well, originally there were 26 black cards to choose from, 
but now I pulled a black card out and I didn't replace it. So now there's only 25 black cards left of the 51 cards that are left in my deck of cards. So my second probability is gonna be 25 and 51 because if I took a black card out and didn't replace it, there's only 25 black cards left. If I took a card out and I didn't replace it, there's only 51 cards left. Now I'm just gonna use my calculator to do 26 and 52 times 25 and 51, and then math, enter, enter, and I get 25 and 102 for my answer. So the answer to question two, the probability of drawing two cards out from a deck of cards without replacement, that both of them are black, is 25 and 102, so just about 25%. So um, in problem four, and you can do problem three, I need the probability of a queen first and a three second. And that's gonna to equal to the probability of getting a queen first times the probability of getting a queen second, a three second. For the first probability, I go to my deck of cards, there's 52 cards, and among those 52 cards, there's four queens. And I'm going to get rid of one of those queens and not going to put it back. I don't know which one, but it doesn't matter which one. The probability of getting a queen first is 4 and 52 because there are four queens of the 52 cards. Now for my second experiment, I'm going to assume one of the queens is gone, so there's only 51 cards left in the deck that I'm pulling. So the second fraction is going to have a denominator of 51 because the deck of cards is missing one of the four queens. And what I need to have happen for my second choice is I need my second choice to be a three. Well, there's still four threes left after I pull out a queen from this deck of cards, so the numerator of my second fraction is going to be four. The denominator is going to be 51 because I pulled one of the four, one of the cards, one of the four queens, and instead of having 52 cards, now my deck has 51 cards. But the numerator is going to be four because I di I didn't pull a three, so there's still four threes left. So the next fraction is going to be four and 51, and now I'm going to do parentheses four divided by 52, parentheses four divided by 51, enter math, enter, enter, and I'll get, it's very unlikely, a 4 and 663 chance. I imagine that's exactly the answer you get for problem 3. Okay, so you, both cards are 5, are easier than both cards are face cards. For face cards, those are the jacks, the queens, and the kings. They're called face cards because they have eyes or they have pictures of faces on them. And only the jacks, the queens, and the kings are considered face cards. Aces don't have faces on them, so they're not considered face cards. So for me, I want to find the probability to get a face card first and a face card second, and that will equal the probability of getting a face card first times the probability of getting a face card second. The probability of getting a face card first is going to be some fraction that has 52 in the denominator. The probability of getting a face card second is going to be some fraction that has 51 in the denominator because I'm this whole set of 10 problems is without replacement. When I looked at the instructions to the problems in this grouping, I could actually find them. It says we're doing this without replacement, meaning I don't put the card back, meaning the second fraction is always going to, its denominator is always going to increment down one. So for the first probability, getting a face card, I need to count the face cards in my deck. And the jacks, the queens, and the kings in every suit are considered face cards. So this deck of cards has 3, 6, 9, 12 face cards. So the first fraction is going to be 12 over 52 because the deck of cards has 12 face cards. I don't know which face card I pulled out, 
but regardless of the one that I pulled out, when I go for my second choice, um, there's only going to be 11 of the face cards left because I started with 12 face cards. The first experiment assumes that I pulled one of the one of the 12 face cards out. Then I only have 11 face cards left. If you count what I haven't blackened out, there would be 11 face cards of the 51 cards that are left in the deck. So I'm just going to do 12 and 52 times 11 and 51 and reduce it. So 12 and 52 times 11 and 51 math, enter, enter. So it's an 11 in 221 chance that we get this happening. For 8, I need the probability that we get a heart first and a spade second. I used to try to draw these, and it always was kind of funny, so I'll try this here. So this is the same as getting a heart first. That's the one I can kind of do best, and then the spade is just ridiculous. So I don't even have any, I cannot even remember how to do a spade. Spade second. This is why I teach math and I'm not an artist. So. My denominators for my fractions are going to be 52, because on the first choice I have all 52 cards to choose from. Because this is a without replacement problem, the second denominator is going to be 51. For my numerators, I go to my deck of cards, and I find out how many hearts there are, because the first one needs to be a heart. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 hearts. So that the first fraction is going to be 13 out of 52 because I can get any one of the 13 hearts. I don't know which heart I get, I'm get. i getting, but I get one of them. And it kind of doesn't matter which one that I get. The second choice, and now I need to start counting spades. And how many spades are left after I pull a heart? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So my second fraction, its numerator is going to be 13 because after I pull a heart from the deck, there's still 13 spades in the deck. Its denominator is going to be 51 because the deck is missing one of its cards. So the second fraction is going to be 13 and 51. And I'll just do this on my calculator. Parentheses 13 divided by 52. Parentheses 13 divided by 51. Enter. Math, enter, enter, and it's 13 and 204 for the probability. Oh gosh. The first card is not a 4, and the second card is a 4. That's a horrible problem to block out. So, probability that we get a 4 first. Whoops. First card. Probability that it's not a four first and is a four second will equal to the probability that you don't get a four first times the probability that I do get a four second. That's easier to do um, without drawing and I'm going to draw a little bit but not so much. So my denominators are going to go 52 and 51 because there's 52 cards to pick from on the first choice. I'm not putting the card back, so there's 51 on the second choice. And for a not a 4, that's a ridiculous thing for me to try to count. There are four 4s in my deck of cards. And so the difference between the 52 cards minus the four 4s, if I if I pinked them all out, there would be 48 cards that aren't 4s. So for my first probability, it's going to be 48 over 52 because there's 48 cards in the deck that aren't 4s. And it doesn't matter which one of them I pick. Let's just say I pick that one. So for the second choice, there's going to be 51 cards to choose from. And my second choice needs to be a 4. Well, I have to figure out how many 4s are in a deck after I remove a card that's not a 4. And the answer to that is if I remove a card from the deck and it's not a 4, then I still have all 4s left. So 
So the numerator for my second fraction is going to be 4 because there's still 4 fourths left and I want to get a 4. So it's going to be 48 of them 52 because there's 48 cards in my deck that aren't 4s of the original 52. When I pull one out that's not a 4, there's still 4-4 four four remaining, 4-4s four remaining of the 51 cards. So 48 and 52 times 4 and 51. Math, enter, enter, and I get 16 and 221. The next problem basically is the same set of problems or the same kind of problems. I'm picking two cards from a deck of cards, but now I'm putting the card back. And when I put the card back, each denominator is going to be 52. So for my problem 12, I need the probability of getting a spade first and a spade second. And that's going to equal the probability of getting a spade first times the probability of getting a spade second. And both denominators are going to be 52 because with replacement says I'm going to pull the card out and put it back in so it has a chance of getting selected both times. Both probabilities are going to be the same here. The probability of getting a spade first there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 spades in my deck of cards. So the first numerator is going to have a 13 in it because there's 13 spades. Whatever spade I pick, pick, I'm going to put it back in. So the second time I go to pick a card, I have all 52 cards to pick from. And the probability is again going to be 13 of 52 because even no matter what spade I pulled out, if I'm putting it back in, there's going to be 13 spades left for the second choice. I think this is 1 in 16. And so each probability is going to be the same here. So let me do this. 13 and 52 times 13 and 52. Math, enter, enter, and it's 1 in 16 because each one of these is equal to 1 and 4. Your answer for 11 should essentially be the same. All right, so 14. Probability we get a black first and a 6 second equals the probability of a black first times the probability of getting a six second and because this is with replacement both denominators are going to be 52 for the first numerator I need to know how many black cards are in a deck of cards and the number of black cards in a deck of cards are 26 I would count the 13 clubs and the 13 spades, so there's 13 clubs and 13 spades, so there's 26 black cards. So the first fraction, its numerator is going to be 26 because there's 26 black cards in the deck, half the deck is black. And then whichever black card I pick, I don't need to highlight it because it's being put, put back. And then for the second pick, I have all 52 cards to choose from and I need to get a 6. And there's six, there's four sixes, so the second fraction is going to be four over 52 because whatever card I put picked, I'm putting it back. So all 52 cards are available, all four sixes are available. And what's that? One in 26. Do this here. So 26 and 52 times four and 52. Math. Enter, enter, I get 1 in 26. So for, for um, these problems, face cards are the jacks, the queens, and the kings. For 16, I need the probability we get a face card first and a face card 
second, and that will equal the probability of getting a face card first, times the probability of getting a face card second. Both denominators are going to be 52 because I'm putting the card back, so there's 52 cards left. And the numerators are going to be the number of face cards, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Both times there's going to be 12 face cards because a deck of cards has 12 face cards, and the fraction numerators are going to be 12 both times because regardless of what card I, I picked, I'm putting it back. So each fraction is going to have a numerator of 12 because initially there's 12 face cards out of the 52 cards. I take my face card back, I put it back in, still picking from 52 cards and there's still 12 face cards. So I'm going to go 12 and 52 times 12 and 52, math, enter, enter, and I get 9 and 169. Getting towards the end of the card problem, neither card is a spade for number 18, so I need the probability of the first card, not a spade, and the second card, not a spade. And that's going to equal the probability that the first card is not a spade times the probability of the second card being not a spade. Both probabilities are going to be the same because they're the same requirement and we're drawing them from the same deck of 52 cards because I'm putting the card back. And how many cards aren't spades? There are 13 clubs, 13 hearts, and 13 diamonds. So there's going to be 13 clubs plus 13 hearts plus 13 diamonds. 13 plus 13 plus 13 is 39. So each one of my fractions, the numerator is going to be 39 because there are 39 cards in my deck that aren't spades. And that's my only requirement is the card not be a spade. And the second one's 39 and 52 again because whichever card I pick, I put it back in. And so I can pick off all 39 non-spades again. So this is going to be 39 and 52 times 39 and 52, math, enter, enter, 9 and 16, or 56%. Last card problem. So I need the first card, not a queen. So probability, the first is not a queen. And the second is not a 7. That's going to equal to the probability that the first is not a queen times the probability the second is not a 7. Both denominators are going to be 52 because I'm putting the card back. I have all 52 cards on each choice. And for not a queen, I get, I'm not going to count all the cards. There are four queens in a deck of cards out of the 52 cards. So the cards that aren't queens are the 52 total cards minus the four queens. So there's 48 cards in my deck of cards that I could label as not queens. So the first fraction's numerator is going to be 48, as will the second fraction, because in the second fraction it's a not 7. And it's the same computation. If I want to find out how many cards are not sevens, there's 52 cards in my deck. Four of them are sevens. So 48 of the cards are not sevens. So both fractions are going to be 48 over 52. So this is really pretty highly probable. So now I'm going to go clear 
48 divided by 52 times 48 divided by 52. Math, enter, enter, and I get 144 over 169. It's 85% chance of that happening. I think that's the end of the card problems. Now we're in the spinner problems, which are really not any different than Spart card problems. So this spinner that we're dealing with here has six different regions. They're all different colors. You can't see the colors because I don't have a color access to a color printer. Each region has a, a one in six chance of happening. So I'm going to spin the spinner once, and I'll, then I'll record the color, and then I'll spin it again. This is going to be like a with replacement because whatever I get on the first ch chance, I could still get it on the second one. So for 22, I need the probability that I get a purple or spinning it twice on the first spin and a purple on the second. And that's going to equal the probability of getting a purple on the first spin times the probability of getting a purple on the second spin. And when I look at this spinner, there's one of the pieces of pie is purple of the one, two, three, four, or five pieces of pie, should I say. So the probability of getting a purple on the first spin is one in five. And I'm assuming that even though the, my spinner might be starting on purple, when I spin it again, on the second one, it still has a one in five chance of coming up purple. The fact that it came up purple the first time doesn't impact the probability that it comes up purple again. And so if I multiply these, I can do it without my calculator and get one in 25. So for 24, I need the probability that the first is not yellow and the second is red and that's going to equal to the probability that the first is not yellow times the probability that the second is red the probability that the first is not yellow there's one two three four of the regions of the five regions aren't yellow so there's a four in five chance that I, I spin something other than the yellow. Purple, orange, red, and green count as not yellow. And then the probability that the second one is red, there's one red region of the five regions. And I can do this again. Four times one is four, five times five is 25. So the probability of that happening is four in 25. For the next spinner problem, I don't see the spinner on there, I have to break this up into four equal regions. So there's going to be two green regions, a yellow and a blue. I'm going to spin the spinner three times now as opposed to two. And I need to get on problem 26, I need to get a probability of a green first and a green second and a yellow third. Well, that's just going to be the probability of getting a green first times the probability of getting a green second times the probability of getting a yellow third. So the multiple, the theorem in this section applies to doing multiple, more than two of, a, of experiments. So the probability of getting a green first, there's two of the four regions are green, so it's going to be two and four. Similarly, I don't think the fact that I get a green on the first chance is going to impact me getting a green on the second one. It still has a two in four chance. And the yellow for the third only has a one in four chance because there's only one yellow region. So I'm going to be dumb and do this on my calculator then. So now I'm going to go parentheses two divided by four, parentheses two divided by four, parentheses one divided by four, enter, math, enter, enter, and I get 1 in 16. So the answer to number 26 is 1 in 16. I'm spinning three times. 
and for 28, I want to get a, a yellow first and a yellow second and a yellow third. And that's going to equal the probability of getting a yellow first times the probability of getting a yellow second times the probability of getting a yellow third. And getting a yellow, there's one yellow region of the four regions, it's going to be one in four each time. So it's going to be one in four times one in four times one in four. And I can do that without my calculator, that's one in 64. Huh. A coin is tossed and then a dice is rolled. Find the requested probability. So for 30, I need a probability that I get a tail on the coin and the dice is not a four. Well, for the first experiment, I need to flip a coin. I need it, it to come up a tail. So what's the probability of getting a tail? I need to be able to find that out. And then I have to multiply it by the probability of my dice, a single-sided dice being tossed once, not being a four. So if I look at the sample space for flipping a coin, it could be head or tail. The probability of getting a tail is one in two because of the two things in the sample space, one of them is a tail. For the second probability, when you roll a single dice, the sample space is the numbers one through six, and I want it to be not a four, so the denominator is going to be six because there's six items in the sample space. The numerator is going to be five because five of the items in the sample space are not a four. So this is going to be one in five times two and six. One times five is five. Two times six is 12. I get five and 12 for number 29. coin is not a tail, so I have probability the coin not a tail and the dice is greater than two. That's going to equal the probability the coin is not a tail times the probability the dice is greater than two. Again, I'll look at the sample spaces. The sample space for flipping a coin is just a single, one time as a single head tail. And the probability that the coin is not a tail, there's one thing in the sample space that's not a tail of the two items in the sample space. So it's going to be one and two. The probability that the dice is greater than two is going to be four out of six because there's four elements in the sample space that are bigger than two. And I'll do this on my calculator, but I can do it without. So it's going to be 1 divided by 2 times 4 divided by 6. And I get math, enter, enter, 1 and 3. Oh, 33 and 34 are a little bit different of a problem, as are 35 through 38. And we're getting close to the end. 39 through 42, and that's the end. So we have how many more, just what, about eight more problems. So here's a survey, 30 women were surveyed and they were asked, would you recommend your builder? That, so they recently had a home built and would you recommend your builder to your friend? 19 said yes, six said no, five weren't really sure. So for 34, I'm trying to find the probability that the first would recommend a builder, the second and the third would not recommend the builder. So what I'm trying to do for 34 is the probability that the first recommends and the second does not recommend and the third does not recommend. That's going to be the probability that the first recommends times the probability that the second does not recommend times the probability that the third does not recommend. So for the first probability in number 34, there are 
30 women, and 19 of them said they would recommend. So that first fraction should be 19 over 30. I'm going to assume that woman's already been selected, and now I'm going to go from the 29 women that are remaining, and of the 29 women that are remaining, how many of them say they wouldn't recommend? Well, so right now I've removed one of the women that would recommend, so I have 18 women left that would recommend, six that say no, five that says not sure, that's my 29, and I need the one of the people that says no, so I'm going to pull out one of the persons that says no. I can't pick them again. I've picked them once. So I've picked one of the person that says yes, one of the person that says no. So I have 18 plus 5 plus 5. I have 28 ladies left. And the last one needs to say no. And there's five ones, five left that would have said no. So I'm going to multiply those three fractions together to get my answer. So I'm going to go Claire. Parentheses 19 divided by 30, parentheses 6 divided by 29, parentheses 5 divided by 28, enter, math, enter, enter, and I get 19 in 1812 as the chances for that happening in that order with these specific 30 women. So maybe you can give your problem 33 a, a crack now. It's basically the same problem. Okay, so we have a bag of marbles that has five blue, three red, and two purples. And the marbles, two marbles are drawn without replacement. So one marble is going to be removed, and that's not going to be put back, and then another marble is going to be removed. For number 36, I need the probability that I get a red first and a red second. That's going to equal to the probability that I get a red first times the probability that I get a red second. So initially there's five, eight, there's ten marbles. Initially the chance of getting a red marble is three and ten. I'm assuming I'm not replacing that marble that I draw because it says without replacement. So I'm going to take one of the red marbles out and I'm going to reach in again and grab another marble. I need that other marble to be red. Now there's only two red marbles left and the second time I go to reach in there's only nine marbles left. So it's going to be three and ten for the first one, two and nine for the second one. Break out my calculator and be lazy. So three divided by ten times two divided by nine. Math, enter, enter. And I get a one in fifteen chance of that happening. Again, the marbles in this are one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can't do that. This. 38 was too complicated the way I had it written, so I needed to take the word not out. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to do 38. The first is purple, and the second is red, and that's fine. Okay, so first choice, so my probabilities is the probability of getting a purple, purple first, and a red second. That's going to be the probability of getting a purple first times the probability of getting a red second, and I'm doing this without replacement. So the first choice, I want to get a purple. There are two purple of the ten marbles or balls, whatever these are. And then for my second choice, I need to get a red. There's three reds left of the nine marbles that are left. You know, cheat two and ten, which is one plus one and fifteen again, isn't it? So I'm gonna do two divided by ten times three divided by nine. Math, enter, enter, and I get one and fifteen again. Yeah, these problems I had to be super careful when I wrote them 
because just one word like this not would have made that problem of way, way more challenging. I would have had to break it into cases and it had been well beyond the scope of what our class should be doing with probability. Okay, so with replacement, now I have to be near as careful when they're with replacement. So two marbles are drawn from a bag, same bag of marbles, but now it's with replacement. So this bag of marbles has five blue, three red, and two purples, and I need the probability of getting a red first and a red second. That's going to be the probability of getting a red first times the probability of getting a red second. The probability of getting a red first, there's three reds of the ten marbles. I'm not going to cross one out for my second probability because I'm, I'm putting it back. So for the second chance, there's still all ten marbles to choose from. There's still three red ones. So both are going to be three and ten. I can multiply this. This comes out to 9 and 100. Last problem, I believe. The probability that the first one is not purple and the second one is red. Here, with, with replacement, it's not as tricky of a question. With replacement, the probabilities are much... You, you can't make them subtly tricky without realizing it. So, I need probability that the first is not purple, and the second is red, and that you can find out by doing the probability that the first is not purple, times the probability that the second is red. First probability the first is not purple, there are eight of the marbles that aren't purple of the ten. I'm not going to cross one out because I'm putting them back. The probability that the second is red is going to be the three reds of the ten. This reduces, so I'll do it to my calculator. So I'll do eight and ten times three and ten. And I get six and twenty-five. So that's the end of this section. Hopefully, you, you saw that most of the problems, essentially, they're all the same. There's, it's super repetitive. These and problems, regardless of the scenario, they're all the same. It's just a matter of figuring out if it's a with or without replacement. And if you're told it's with replacement or without replacement, then it's obvious. If you're not told, then somehow you have to infer that from the problem, and that could be a little bit tricky. So if it is, come visit me, and I'll try to make it less tricky.